code. Let's begin by loading up a Ruby interpreter by typing IRB into our terminal window. There it is. In the previous episode, we demonstrated some Ruby code in the form of math expressions. Let's just do another one here. Now let's say you needed a lot of math using the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. These are just some expressions you might want to do with that number. You get the point. This would get pretty tedious pretty quickly. Now there is one extremely fundamental yet powerful concept in computer programming that can help us with this and a myriad of other problems. Virtually every piece of software that has ever been written relies heavily on this important concept. And that is... <laughs> the variable. What I'm about to show you will vaguely resemble algebra, but it's not algebra, so don't be scared. We can take our favorite but long number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and store it inside a variable as follows. Let's say we're going to name our variable x. So x equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Press enter. This is the equivalent of saying, I want the letter x to henceforth refer to the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If you want, you can think of a variable as a box, which contains some information. In this example, the box is called x, and the data it holds is the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Declaring what information a variable holds is also known as setting the variable, or sometimes assigning the variable. You'll note that immediately after setting the variable, the computer just spits back the very thing we've just stored in the variable. And that's just something that Ruby does, and it will have significance, but we'll address it in a future episode. Now that we've set the x variable, we can now just type x, and voila, we get our favorite number. Now let's do something else with our variable. We can do x times 2, which is to say that take whatever information is inside of x and multiply it by 2. And likewise, x divided by 4, x minus, and these are the same expressions we've done before, but now we don't have to type in the actual number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, we're just accessing that number through the variable x which holds that number. Now the fact that we chose x to be the name of that variable is totally arbitrary. We could have chosen y or a or b or c or cat or dog. One basic rule for variable names in Ruby is that the name cannot begin with a number and it can also not have spaces in it. Now Watch this. A equals 2. B equals 3. Now you don't need to be a math whiz to guess what A plus B will give us. So as you see here, you can actually take multiple variables and use them in conjunction with one another. So A times B, B minus A, etc. Now, variables have many important uses besides just being able to refer to a large number inside a simple letter. But I wanted to demonstrate just one of the many uses of a variable. We will be exploring other uses in future screencasts. In the meantime, let's play around with variables a little bit more. If you'll recall, x is our variable that's holding the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, if we type in x equals 5, Let's see what x gives us now. It gives us 5. So what we've just done is we've overwritten the fact that x used to represent 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. As soon as we typed in x equals 5, that means forget everything we've said before. From now on, x will hold the number 5. And now I'm going to demonstrate something that will totally blow your mind. Or not. If you recall, x is equal to 5. Now watch this. Q equals x. So now, I just created a brand new variable called Q and said that it should equal x, meaning that Q should hold the same data that x is holding. So, what does Q now hold? It holds the number 5, just like x did. And now, for a pop quiz. A equals 1. B equals 2. C equals A plus B. 
When I type in enter, what will the variable C hold? You have five seconds to answer. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. C holds the number three. I hope you guessed it. You'll know from our first screencast that numbers are just one type of data, and that there is another type of data known as strings, which, if you'll recall, are basically just words. And we can store just about any type of data in a variable, and strings are no exception. So if we said c equals cantaloupe, we'd be saying from now on that the variable c holds the string cantaloupe. Now, just to clarify, cantaloupe is surrounded by quotation marks, since that's how strings work in Ruby. However, as you've noticed, variable names are not surrounded and should not be surrounded by quotes. If you surround something with quotes, Ruby will assume that it's a string. But in this case, C is the name of our variable, and cantaloupe is our string. So now we can type in C, and the computer tells us what piece of information the C variable was holding. It happens to be holding a string cantaloupe. Now we can do things with this variable, like we've done with our other variables. We could do C plus another string, put them together to say cantaloupes are good for you. Practice setting and playing around with variables yourself, and soon they'll become second nature to you. Thanks for watching. Anyone can learn to code.